Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a great honor for me to be here, uh, welcoming all of you to uh, to a lecture that we've tried to organize uh, with the help of uh, Professor Sai Baba from NIS, Indian Institute of Science, uh, Bangalore. And it gives me an immense pleasure to welcome uh, Professor Gohar Raza, an eminent scientist, uh, a popular science communicator, with whom I had a chance to work with in my first three years of my career, way back uh, 92 to 95, while he was a scientist at Nistats, which later on, I guess, uh, he uh, went and joined Niskia. And uh, it's after a long, long time that we've gotten together, and I am very happy to share the dais with him at the moment. It's an immense uh, pleasure and an opportunity for me to be welcoming you to this uh, RIS lecture on science, technology, and society, the challenge of reaching out. Before I get started, here's a quick uh, introduction about Professor Sai Baba. Uh, Professor Sai Baba is the TV Raman by chairman, a chair professor at the National Institute of Advanced Studies in Bangalore, working in the domain of science communication and risk communication. He is an outstanding scientist and former director, resources uh, management group at the Indira Gandhi Center for Atomic uh, Research in Kalpakam, and a senior professor at the Homi Bhabha National Institute. His present work includes uh, obtaining effective and informative insights on managing public perceptions in public acceptance of public risks associated with new and emerging technologies, those science and technology communications, through science and technology communications. Uh, Professor Sain Baba is developing platforms for enhancing interaction between scientists and public using conventional and non-conventional media of communication. Welcome, uh, Professor Sain Baba, and thank you for accepting our invitation for this uh, lecture today. Professor Gohar Raza has been a former scientist with Niskia CSIR and is a leading science communicator. He loves writing poetry and is a famous for the poet as well, a social activist and a documentary filmmaker, working to popularize uh, the understanding of science among general public, known for his films like Jange Azadi on India's first war of independence in club on Bhagat Singh. Uh, good evening to all. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nakul, for uh, inviting me to be here. Uh, when I, he talked to me that I should come here and give a lecture, I just accepted it without uh, uh, realizing. Then Dr. Kinkini contacted me and told, sir, it is possible that uh, uh, some senior colleagues would come, people who are interested in policy making would come. Uh, then I, I said, okay, let me talk over. Uh, nice to see Pallav here in the, in the audience, and uh, generally I'll be the other side when he talks. And so it's uh, and uh, well, I realized that uh, that um, uh, it's a good opportunity to share some of the ideas uh, which I've been thinking. What is the problem we are facing now? This is the world we are living now, and if you divide them broadly into developed and those who are aspiring to be developed, and you can see the problem we are going to face. The problem is that. The, the, the developed nations, the population is more or less saturated or it is declining. The bulk of the addition of the human beings would happen in the world which is aspiring to be developed and that is a big challenge. Already you want to, you want, you, you want to become, reach the level of uh, the quality of life that is there and then you are adding more people to it and that is the challenge which you are facing. And I would call the pillars of development to the society is that one is energy, which I always keep on the top of it. It is to seek energy independence and also promote efficient utilization. You have to take care of the environment where we are there and conserve or at least minimize the impact on the environment when the progress is happening. And also to ensure the economy is there, that is enhance the national economic development through the use of technology. All this we are doing because we want our society to have a better quality of life. And these are the where the pillars of development and then on the top of it stands energy. And since I come from the energy background, I keep emphasizing on the need for energy independence in this country. 
Now we want to research and development. And if you want to talk research and development, it's a purposeful and systematic use of scientific knowledge to enhance the quality of life. Ultimately, I'm linking all research, all development is linked to the quality of life. The development has to be there. So for that, you have to develop new knowledge and apply scientific or engineering knowledge to connect the knowledge in one field to that and others. This connecting is what is very important. And it's a continuous process. You cannot define when to start and when to end. And R&D is a continuous process. If it is so, then how do you measure the outcome? Okay, if I say it's a continuous process, how do you measure this outcome? And where does the innovation comes into the picture? So this, the scientific inquiry, I think is all of us have this inquiry. The, the scientific inquiry is, is to obtain the knowledge in the form of testable explanations. And this, the knowledge is to say, can I test it? I know this is important. And it can be used to predict the results of future experiments. This is where I would call it as a, it's a part of the basis for a scientific inquiry. And it is for gaining better understanding of the topic under study, whatever it is. And later to use understanding to intervene in its causal mechanisms. For example, if you want to have cure a disease, I mean, how we can do that part of it. The better an explanation is at making predictions, more useful it frequently frequently can be, and the more likely it will con continue to explain a body of evidence better than its alternatives. So this is what we call it as R&D continuum. You start some basic research, then you go to applied research, the work involving basic knowledge for the solution of a problem, then the development would come. And then you have to fine tune the development in the form of technical services and cost and performance improvement to existing products is what you do that. This is what we define as a, a R&D continuum. If any product that is developed, if it is not through this continuum, then you can see the product tangibility would be not shifting from low to high. And this way you have to go through this grind if you want your products to be of high quality. Uh, one of the issue that has been debated all over uh, the world in the field of science communication is that do we consider a common person, the sovereign, as a clean slate? As a clean slate on which anything can be written, which means that clean, this clean slate has only one problem, that we scientists, we communicators of science, have not done very well in writing very clearly science. And if we do it, if the efficiency of the channel and total information that is available to science is passed through efficient channels, pipes, then we can make uh, this sovereign a scientifically illiterate person. That is the only problem. The problem is not so simple. This citizen of planet Earth is a thinker, is a thinker like any scientist, is a person who reacts, who reacts to situations which are given to him and which are changing when he is trying to grapple with his life, daily life. So this is a model which is known as deficit model. That there is a deficit, you have pool of knowledge, connect it efficiently with pipes, pump in information, have a good communicator like Pallav Bagla, very fancy production of scientific content, and everything will be hunky and dory. No, it doesn't happen like that. They have their own culture. Scientific information is produced in a different culture, which is not people's culture. It is produced in ivory towers. Let's face it. And especially after Manhattan Project, the big science is funded by state. And scientists are trained to do two things. They're not trained to communicate to people. They're trained to communicate to either politicians who will ultimately decide their job, what kind of science they do, where the funding goes, etc., etc. So you do lobbying for your own projects. The other thing they are trained to do is to communicate to what he called as peers, among peers. So you talk in a very, very different kind of language which is not understood 
beyond a small field of science, highly specialized language. So when you say velocity, it means velocity, which is a vector. Now tell a media person that there is a difference between velocity and a speed. And everything goes for a six. It's a toss completely. The moment you say f is equal to m1 into m square, m, m by r square, gone. You are not communicating. Media person is gone, completely out of your hands.